Thank you all for joining us here at I-80 Sports, where today it's shark season. Thank you all for joining us here again at I-80 Sports for our third annual Shark Season episode. It's kind of wild to think that this is our third Shark Season episode. Really wild to think. Hopefully, if you guys have checked out the rest of our Shark Season uh, week in general, uh, checking out the NFL uh, episode, the MLS, the NBA, you know, checking out all their episodes. If you haven't already, go back, check out those episodes. And if you're not subscribed already, subscribe down below youtube.com slash i80 sports and if you're listening to us elsewhere make sure you listen to us on wherever you like to listen to your podcast i particularly like to listen to it on spotify so hopefully you're listening there you can easily find us there you can listen instead of watch and make sure you check out our website idsports.com you can check out all of our content and our shark season episodes there as well Get yourself a t-shirt as low as $8, and you can even find some Shark Season merch there as well. And if you don't currently follow us on Twitter, make sure you follow us down below at I80 underscore Sports NHL. And if you follow us already, thank you all so much because we greatly value all of your support. I'm Brian. He's Tom. Tom, how are you doing during Shark Season? I'm doing well. Speaking of sharks, uh, the ones in San Jose just hired a name that's near and dear to me, David Quinn, as their head coach. Good luck with you- that. Yeah, and if you want to hear our reactions to that, make sure you check out our next episode where we'll be, where we'll be talking about winners and losers so far of the NHL offseason in 2022. You don't want to miss that whatsoever. And the only way that you check that out is by subscribing down below. I'm just going to shamelessly plug that down below. But it's shark season. Away we go, as always, with this. We are going to be kind of comparing different breeds of sharks to NHL players, their attributes, uh, and we're just going to have some fun with this. And we would love to hear from you guys down below based on the picks that we gave. If you have a person or a player that fits that bill a little bit better, comment down below. Join the conversation. We want to hear from you guys on what you guys think of these different shark uh, choices as well. But away we go with our first shark. We are looking at first the Mako shark. The Mako shark is the short fin Mako, and it lives in the open ocean and can grow to be about 12 feet long. Uh, this shark is known as the fastest uh, in the entire ocean. To give perspective, it has a top speed anywhere between 35 miles an hour and 45 miles an hour. So obviously right now we are looking for an NHL player that – Fits the bill as the fastest in the entire NHL. Tom, let's start with you. Who do you think fits that bill? I mean, I'm going to be a little obvious here. Um, a player who has just won his first Stanley Cup, had himself a hell of a playoffs. Um, stat line was a little bit better than I thought, but I'm going to go with uh, Colorado Avalanche's uh, Nathan McKinnon. Um, he was clocked at being close at 30 miles per hour during the playoffs in the series against Edmonton. So I feel like this is a little bit of an obvious one, but um, uh, he's the fastest player in the league right now. And one of the best, if not the best right now. Really good choice. I mean, usually over the past two years that we've been doing shark season, inevitably Connor McDavid comes up as one of our answers, but it's low hanging fruit at this point. We want to come up with some more diverse answers. And that's what I have here for all of these answers. I tried to pick somebody a little bit more diverse with each of these answers for these sharks. So there are a few guys that I can think of for the Mako Shark at fitting the bill for the fastest in the NHL. But for me, I've got to go with St. Louis Blues forward Jordan Cairo. And he's a difference maker for the Blues, and he was this season. And he even bested Connor McDavid in the skills competition this year, winning the gold for the fastest skater in that competition. Uh, but Cairo is one of the fastest, in my opinion. Honorable mention as well goes to Adrian Kempe of the LA Kings. I have a feeling I could be saying he is the fastest player next year, depending on how the Kings do this year and how much of a difference maker he can be because he's already paying dividends for the LA Kings. Also an honorable mention when he's healthy, Dylan Larkin of the Detroit Red Wings. Shout out to Bex. How you doing, Bex? But um, if you know, you know. 
But good solid choices to start off with there. Let's move on to our next and probably most recognizable shark, the great white shark. The great white sharks are among the biggest and deadliest oceanic apex predators. While sharks gained international popularity and brought attention and fear to sharks everywhere after the hit movie Jaws was released in 1975. So we are looking at a shark here that for better or for worse brings both positive and negative attention to himself and his teammates. Think about it almost more of like a Hollywood shark, if you will. Tom, who's your choice here? Well, I'm leaning towards the negative side on this one, and I'm also going to go a little off the wall, a little off the grid here. Um, I'm actually picking somebody who hasn't played a minute in the NHL yet. I'm going with, believe it or not, Shane Wright. Shane Wright, you know, had an underwhelming World Junior t- Championship. Same time, not really his fault. IHF screwed that one up, tournament organizers. Then he basically brought attention to himself and said, he's worked the hardest, he's the best, so he deserves to be picked number one overall. As we all saw at the draft a couple weeks ago, Shane Wright sat there and his name was not called till number four overall by Seattle. And even there was uncertainty on Ron Francis and the Seattle Brain Trust face. There's some Seattle fans who are saying, why did we draft this guy? He's a cancer. He's already running his mouth without playing a game in the league. So you know what? I got to go with Shane Wright here. And, and it's up to him to prove me wrong. It's up to him to prove me wrong to go into Seattle and prove himself to the fans and to the league and to all his detractors. And we'll see what happens. But right now, I got to go with him. He's got a little too much arrogance in him. And the reason he fell also fell towards number four is that the three teams ahead of him, especially Montreal, said they didn't like his attitude in the um, uh, in the pre-draft interviews. They didn't like that he had a cocky, smug attitude and felt that he didn't need to listen to anybody. It's funny, like, listening to also that remark when it comes to Shane Wright, not to go on a tangent, but there were two other players. Uh, I listened to a a podcast, uh, obviously probably one of the most popular hockey podcasts out there right now, the Spit and Chicklets podcast. And they had on Brian Burke uh, right after he was done with Calgary. And the Spit and Chicklets podcast asked Brian Burke, who was the former general manager of the Toronto Maple Leafs, um, has anybody ever landed on his do not draft list? And he mentioned two players in particular, and that was... Uh, Nail Yakupov, just because he had Mm -hmm. one of the worst interviews he said that he had ever heard. He was so smug. He was so full of it. Just like Shane Wright was. Yep. And the other one was Thomas Vanek, who uh, Thomas Vanek uh, back in the day, he just kind of had a chip on his shoulder and just thought, hey, Toronto's drafting seven. I'm going to go at two. Why am I even listening to you guys right now? Uh, And I mean, one player had a fan, a pretty fantastic career in Thomas Vanek. The other, Nail Yakupov, not so much. Mm-hmm. So let's see where Shane Wright ends up here. But to bring it back to the great white shark and who my comparative to is in the NHL, I'm going to throw it back here. I'm going to give a player here that I think a lot of people kind of forget is a bit of a great white shark himself, Sidney Crosby of the Pittsburgh Penguins. Uh Cry baby Crosby as a lot of people will call him. I don't necessarily call him that. I do have respect for Sidney Crosby myself. Uh, he was an angstier teen like player back in this prime when uh, especially, you know, he would get hit and he would complain to the refs and then other teams would take it out on his other teammates. But now he more so draws positive attention to the Pittsburgh Penguins these days, uh, bringing the best out of the entire Penguins roster. You noticed when Sidney Crosby was out for a few games against the New York Rangers in the playoffs this year, the Penguins in general were lost without Sidney Crosby. He is a difference maker on that ice. He is one of the most noticeable players in the entire NHL. And he's, he's the face of the NHL with Connor McDavid, you know, a passing a torch between the new and the old. So yeah, Sidney Crosby is my Hollywood shark for, well, he's my great white shark, without a doubt. Moving on to our next shark selection here, we've got the hammerhead shark. Hammerhead sharks are great hunters and are known for their unusual head shape, which allows them to use special sensory organs to locate food. So, hmm, what could we be talking about with a hammerhead shark? Well, look at its head. Very unique feature. So here we are looking for a shark who uses some unusual attributes to get the job done on a nightly basis. So, Tom, who fits the bill of a hammerhead shark? 
Well, it's funny. My choice right now actually could have qualified as a great white shark as well. But um, uh, I'm going to leave his off-ice antics as of late alone. And I'm going to use just his size and his production on the ice. And that's none other than New Jersey native, even though if you're really from New Jersey, where he grew up is basically eastern Philadelphia. But still, Johnny Goudreau. I'm going with Johnny Goudreau. Johnny Goudreau is... Let me pull it up here. Five foot nine, 165 pounds. Guy, guy back in the day probably wouldn't even crack the NHL 15, 20 years ago. Johnny Goudreau this past season, 40 goals, 75 assists, 115 points for the Calgary Flames. 14 points in 12 playoff games for those same Calgary Flames. You know, Columbus, um, if he can behave himself, is going to love this guy, especially if Patrick Line can find his game again as well. So I'm going to go with Johnny Goudreau on this one. Good choice. And I've actually got a similar player, much akin to Johnny Gaudreau. Also, Johnny Gaudreau, Columbus. Really? That's that's where you chose? Okay. Um, yeah, still, you know, little snake bit on that one. Um, but I'm going to go with a bit of a hometown choice here. I'm going to go with uh, Jack Hughes of the New Jersey Devils. And you look at him, his boyish looks. And you think to himself, this guy probably can't even lace his boots in the NHL, and you would be sorely, sorely mistaken. Much like a Drew, Hughes is not the biggest guy on the ice, but his presence is among the biggest in the, in the NHL when he's healthy. His offensive zone entrance topped all NHL players on average this year, and I feel he is primed for not only a career year, but a breakout year with the New Jersey Devils this year. I think we could be talking about Jack Hughes quite a bit this year if he plays 78 to 82 games this year mark my words on that one moving right along to our next shark we've got the leopard shark the leopard shark has distinctive markings that make for a unique natural camouflage so i think we can kind of figure out where we might be going with this one with the leopard shark but for the leopard shark here we're looking for your favorite hidden player Someone who works behind the scenes to keep things moving, but does not necessarily get the recognition he deserves. If you, you know, if you really kind of want to think about it in one way, an underrated player. So, Tom, let's go with you. Who, in your mind, is a leopard shark in the NHL? Well, I'm going with a guy who is, was a huge part of the last two Tampa Bay Lightning Stanley Cup victories and a huge, huge part of their run to the finals this year. Due to cap constraints and just the way the economics of the league are now, he's no longer Tampa Bay Lightning. He's now a member of your New Jersey Devils. Going with Andre Palat. Drove me nuts as a Ranger fan in the Eastern Conference Finals. You look up and down that roster. Stamkos, Hedman, Kucherov, Vasilevsky, McDonough. But whatever reason, Palat just seemed to put the nail in the coffin of the Rangers every time. So I'm going with Andre Palat. And hopefully he puts the nail in the Rangers' coffin as a member of the Devils. You got to make the playoffs first. You hush. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> let's not talk about that. Uh, for me, I'm going to go out of left field here. Here's one not a lot of people would think of on the first try. And this is gonna, also going to be a shout out to our, our buddies over at the Frozen Four podcast. Buffalo forward Tage Thompson. He had a career year this year. Tom, I I'm wondering offhand, without looking, without Googling it, without anything, tell me, do you know how many goals scored, uh, goals Tage Thompson scored this year? Uh, 26. I don't know. He scored 38 this year. Okay. Yeah. He had a career high 38 goals, 68 points in 78 games this year. That is not nothing at all. And he's not getting nearly enough attention for his production this year just because he's a member of the Buffalo Sabres. He was one of the few guys on that roster keeping Buffalo remotely competitive towards the end of the year. Buffalo was fun to watch after Jack Eichel got traded. They were among one of the fun, more most fun teams to watch in the NHL. No hyperbole, no smoke and mirrors, no nothing. I'm excited to see what Buffalo can do this year with a fun roster, with getting younger, with getting better, maybe even a full season of Owen Power, but it all leads off with the production of Tate Thompson this year, and I expect him 
to not only maintain his production, but he could even exceed his production this year if that lineup keeps growing around him. And he's only 24 years old. Still a lot of room to grow there for Tage Thompson. But mark my words, watch out for him. He's going to be a fun one to watch over this next year. But at this point, we've come to our last shark of our episode. And like I said, join us down below in the comments section down below with what you think of our selections and even give your own selections. We want to hear from you guys in the comments section below. But here's our last shark, the Thresher Shark. The Thresher Shark hunts by whipping its tail to stun fish before going in for the kill. So with the Thresher Shark, we want a player who finds a way to stun and amaze both crowds and opponents on a nightly basis. A highlight reel player, if you will. Tom, who's your selection for a Thresher Shark in the NHL? Well, I'm going to keep it on the narrative of a very good player on a not-so-good team. I'm also going to keep it kind of on the Buffalo narrative, sort of, as in he doesn't play for the Sabres. He may play for them one day. He grew up there. Hopefully he makes a stop in some other city in the same state before he goes to Buffalo. But I'm going to go with the number on your shirt. Maybe the greatest American hockey player ever, Patrick Kane. We see how Patrick Kane whips the puck, how he does head fakes, how he can score those goals, and how he can set other guys up. Guys like the Brinkett, oh, wait, Chicago traded him. Guys like Artemi Panarin, oh, wait, they traded him too. So I don't know who the hell he's going to be passing into this year. He might just be scoring a lot of goals before he hopefully gets shipped at Shipped out of town to um, uh, the biggest city in the United States. Um, I'm just saying, you know, I'm just hoping for that. Um, But, yeah, I'm going with Patrick Kane of the Chicago Blackhawks for how much longer we have no idea. Tom, I didn't know you wanted Patrick Kane to be a New York Islander. I said city. I didn't say <laughs> suburbs. All right, fine. <laughs> we all know that could be where he's going, but Let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let's hey, I, I I have him in uh, I acquired him in HL twenty two for Truba in a first. <laughs> him and Panarin are lighting it up on my second line. Of course he is. <laughs> of course he is. All right, I got to admit, and this is going to be unfair. I had a lot of trouble picking just one player for Thresher Shark, so it's a three way tie for me. I actually, is one more thing I wanted to say before you go. Go ahead. I actually had Connor McDavid in my as my first choice, but come on. How many times have we used him on this? Exactly. Like, it's so difficult, but I'm proud of myself. I didn't use Connor McDavid once on any of my shark lists. I have three very unique, yeah. different players here. So it's a three-way tie for me. Here are the players. Anaheim Ducks forward, Trevor Zagris. Okay. Carolina Hurricane forward, Andre Svechnikov. And Minnesota uh, Wild forward Kirill the Thrill Kaprizov. Can agree with that one. Yeah. The reason why I chose all three, all three have scored some head spinning goals over the past year or so. I mean, Kaprizov literally runs circles around defenses, literal circles. There are videos of him literally carrying the puck himself in his own offensive zone, literally going circles around the defense until he finally finds exactly where he wants to score from, exactly where he f can find that shooting zone. Andrei Svechnikov, what more needs to be said about him with, he pulled off the Michigan goal twice in one season. Twice, not once. Like once would be amazing in an entire career. He pulled off twice in an entire year. Nuts, in my opinion. He scores some of the most beautiful goals in the NHL. Is he the, one of the best players in the entire NHL? I don't know if I consider him top 25, but he is impressive. That's for sure. Trevor Zagris, the youngest guy on this list, he, I mean, first of all, if you didn't look at the goal of the year that him and Sonny Milano pulled off this year, Go back and watch that video just to give you the highlight of that one. He scored one of the most – he he assisted one of the most impressive goals. He popped a puck over the net for Sonny Milano to literally full-on like Aaron Judge bat it into the back of the net. And it, I, obviously it wasn't a home run, but it was a goal, but still. Um, just bananas and bonkers to me. All three players make these highlight real goals on a nightly basis. And yeah, they're my choice for the Thresher Shark. But 
like we said, guys, that was our last shark. With all the sharks that we've gone through, we want to hear from you guys down below. Comment down below. Let us know what your choices are. Do you agree? Do you disagree with our choices? Let us know. This has been yet another fun episode of our shark season. And like I said, if you have not checked out the other shark season episodes yet, I highly recommend that you do so. Shameless plug to our YouTube page. Once again, if you're not here on YouTube, youtube.com slash IED sports. And if you're here on YouTube, subscribe, hit the bell. So that way, you know, when more content is coming your way and drop a, drop a like, if you liked what we talked about today, you can also find our content down below at I 80 sports.com. I don't know why I had a hitch in the middle of that, but at <laughs> I 80 sports.com, you can also hit up our shop. We've got some shark season merch there in case you want to wear some shark season merch as well. Go out and get it. And make sure you follow us on Twitter at I80 underscore sports NHL. And if you follow us already, thank you guys so much because we greatly value all of your support. But it's time to move away from shark season and time to continue on with the rest of the NHL offseason. Make sure that you guys join us because you don't want to miss a single episode of what we're going to be doing to preview the remainder leading up to the beginning of the the NHL regular season in October. We've got a long way to go until then. You don't want to miss a single bit of the action as we detail all that is left to come and preview the teams, the divisions, and maybe even some winners and losers of this offseason. Join us for our next episode. Thanks for joining us here again for our Shark Season episode. I'm Brian. He's been Tom as always. This has been our third annual Shark Season NHL episode.